Hey everybody, so today we're going to look at creating a character in MakeHuman, animating them in Mixamo, and getting them into Max. So first thing you're going to need to do is download the MakeHuman software from makehumancommunity.org. Right now there's an upcoming 1.2.0 release that's not out yet, so you're going to want to download the old version for your platform. Also you're going to want to make sure you have an Adobe ID so you can log into Mixamo, which is the site we're going to use to animate our character. You don't need to download any software from this site. It's a web-based application, but you do need an Adobe ID to log in. So after you've downloaded the MakeHuman software, run it and it'll give you an interface like this. And here you've got a lot of control to build a character. We've got gender, slider, age, muscularity, weight, height, proportions, ethnicity, under gender, there's more control for the chest, under face, we have a lot of control for the shape of the head, to the ovalness of the head. The triangular shape of the head. And then we've got incredibly detailed control for things like the forehead, whether it's bulgy, how tall it is, how the temples bulge out or sink in, um, the neck, how deep it is, how wide it is, the eyes, the nose. So you've got a tremendous amount of fine control over the way your character looks. Mouth. Etc. So you can go really deep with this and play with manipulating every aspect of your character's appearance. The torso is here, and we can scale it vertically, scale it horizontally, change the hips, the stomach, all different aspects of the body. We've got the arms and the legs, starting with the hands, going to the arms and the legs, and this is where you add arm muscularity. So for instance, on the right arm, I can go to the upper arm thickness, increase it, and you see that becomes more muscular, and I have upper arm thickness on the other dimension as well to create a real sort of beefy arm there. And that's only on one side, so I've got symmetry controls. So you see I've made a nice beefy upper arm there, but I've got a skinny upper arm on this side so I can use the symmetry control here and say symmetry right to left and that will transfer any changes I made on the character's right to the character's left and now the arms match in terms of their muscularity. Uh, there's a randomizing feature if you rand want to randomize the face, body, or both. And then under geometries we can add clothing here um, which we're not going to do yet because I want to show you how to download clothing. We can make the eyes either high poly or low poly. I say keep them high poly. There's relatively few hairstyles available. Um, there's some that we can download. You can add teeth if necessary. Topologies, here you can uh, change the basic mesh, underlying mesh of the person. And uh, I like the male muscle one because it does give a little bit more definition to the body. Um, the male generic is fine as well. And if you're going to be creating a lot of instances, uh, you're going to want a low-poly version like this Proxy 741, which is an extremely 
low poly version, but that's going to be fine for large crowd scenes where you don't see an incredible amount of detail. And then this uh, mid, this mid range um, poly is also fine for larger crowd scenes um, where you don't want a highly detailed model for each one of your figures. But male generic and male muscle are the nicer looking ones if you're dealing with just a few characters. Can add eyebrows. which add a lot of personality. Eyelashes, which are a little bit problematic. You probably don't want to add eyelashes. And a tongue if you're going to be doing anything with an open mouth. Under materials, we can uh, really expand upon this sort of flat colored skin. For instance, here's middle-aged African male. Gives us some hair, gives us a little bit of uh, shadow there, and puts some hair on the chest and just gives us an overall better looking rendering. And under, under Pose Animate, we're not going to be doing any posing in Make Human, but we do need to add a skeleton. Um, so we're going to add the CMU skeleton, which is one for uh, that makes it very easy to map motion capture data onto our figure. Okay, so let's take a look at how to download clothing and get some get some clothing on our character here. We'll go back to the makehumancommunity.org website, click on the assets page. And we have clothes, body extensions, targets, full body models. There's a lot you can explore here. We're just going to grab some clothes. So here you can filter by the type of clothing you want. You can also go to a thumbnail gallery if you want to see images. I just want some pants, so I'm going to filter my pants category and see what I can find here. Here's male classic jeans. And so to, to download clothing, you need to download these files, the MHCLO file, the OBJ file, the MHMAT file. You don't need to download the thumb file, but you do need to download the diffuse texture. So save link as, and you want to save these into the Make Human folder. So on a Macintosh, Make Human is going to make its folder in your user folder inside of the documents folder. You'll find the Make Human folder. Inside Make Human, you'll find the data folder. And in here, there's data for hair, clothes, poses, expressions, skins, etc. So go into Clothes, make a new folder. We'll call this new folder Jeans. We'll call this new folder Jeans. And we'll save all the files into the Jeans folder. So I'm saving the Mail Classic Jeans MHCLO file in there. Saving the OBJ file. Saving the MHMAT file. And then for the texture image, I don't want to save this image because this is a very small, low resolution thumbnail. I want to actually click this image so it opens up at full size and save the full size image. As you can see, the full size image is considerably more detailed. And save image as mailclassicjeans.png. So those are the files you need to download to make that clothing available in MakeHuman. So if I switch back to MakeHuman, Go to my geometries, clothes, and here's male classic jeans. And that puts some pants on this guy. That's great. So the other thing I want to do is give him some hair. So again, I'm going to go back to 
make human back to my assets page go to body extensions filter for hair and I'm going to take this uh, hair male spiky and do the same procedure save link as Under hair, make a new folder. Spiky. Save the MHCLO file. Save the OBJ file. Save the MHMAT file. load the diffuse texture image and save image as and the hair this hair isn't showing up here but we're going to be able to apply our own coloration to it in max we're going to export it as an fbx file let's check and see where the export is going place it into the export folder inside the make human folder and we'll save it. Let's go take a look at what MakeHuman placed into that folder. It placed our FBX file. It also created a folder called Textures, and it gave us image files for the genes, the eyebrow, his eyes, and his body. So that's going to be important for importing into Max later. But first, let's animate this character. So to create the animation, I'm going to save my work in make human switch over to the Mixamo website and I'm going to upload my character to Mixamo select the character file that's the FBX file we just made documents make human exports tutorial guide.fbx so now the FBX file we just created in MakeHuman is being uploaded to the Mixamo website. And once it's uploaded, we're going to be able to apply an animation to it. And this is where you test and see if your character is, seems to be properly matched to the animation. Notice that the skin textures and things did not come in. That's fine. We're going to bring those in in Max. So we say Next. Your 3D character has been uploaded. Proceed with this new character. Yes. Next. And here he is loaded without his textures. Interestingly, the hair texture did come in, but the other, the genes and the skin did not and we'll uh, give him some sort of animation let's just give him a walk there's a huge variety of walking animations available and lots of different types of animations I'm going to give him a standard walk there's the standard walk and we're going to want him to walk in place so we click the in place button and that's it we've just animated the character that we made in make human and so now we can download it we're going to download not as an fbx this time but as a dae file we're going to download as a collada dae with skin 30 frames per second download There seems to be only one left that I can find. My students will be fascinated by that. Are you recording right now? I am. Hello, everyone. That was Niav. <laughs> you didn't look like you were recording. And place this also into the exports folder 
call him tutorial guy animated save this is going to save a zip archive of the DAE file which we're going to then have to decompress so tutorial guy animated.zip has been downloaded I'm going to decompress it And the file that decompresses will be named after the animation that we use, which we're going to want to then change. And now we're ready to bring this DAE file into Max. So I'm going to close out my browser. Close out Make Human. And in Max, I've created a little structure. I can drag in this file, turn on my world, and there he is. But we need to do a little bit more work to get him moving and to get him visible. So the first thing we're going to need to do is enable the animation which is the anim enable message, anim enable dollar sign one. Which allows us to turn on and off his animation with a toggle. So there we have our animated character moving inside of Max. And of course, I can connect that toggle to the main toggle so that as soon as I turn on my world, the animation starts. Then we're going to need to change the material mode. So we'll do at material mode 3. This will use the internal materials that are part of the DAE file that we loaded. And now we need to apply the texture images so we'll take these texture images put them into our project let's also be sure to put the animated model file into our project and we'll take for instance his body And before we apply the texture, we need to know what layer or what group the texture is on. So let's make an atrui here. And we'll set it to draw group. And we'll see what the different draw groups are. So draw group one is the skin. Draw group two is the hair. Draw group three is the eyes. Draw group four is the eyebrows. And draw group five are the genes. So if we want to change the, the texture applied to the body, and this is kind of interesting in itself, that everything that's not part of that is missing. Um, we can do a prepend send material, then the layer we want to send it to, or the draw group we want to send it to, which is one, and then diffuse underscore texture. So prepend send material one diffuse texture will apply that texture to the model. And we can do this for the remainder of the textures. We'll go back to draw group zero so that the entire thing is drawn and what did we say? Number two is the hair. Let's leave that out for the moment. Number three is the eyes. So we can take brown eye.png and send that to draw group three. So the eyes will be properly textured. Draw group four is the eyebrows. Do the same thing there. Texture the eyebrows.
to draw group four. Eyebrows are textured and then draw group five is the genes. So we'll take the classic genes texture and send that to number five. Now you can see there's a considerable amount of aliasing in this genes texture because it's, uh, it's got fine lines in it. And this is a case where we might not want this high resolution of texture. If we want to kill that aliasing, we can do a jit.matrix 3 float 32, say 250 by 250. at adapt zero and that will scale this image down so that we're not going to get this kind of unpleasant aliasing in the image. Aha, needs to be a jit dot matrix four because this has an alpha channel. So there, now you can see it's a lower resolution gene, but it doesn't have that strange aliasing phenomenon. And of course, all of these can be loaded at runtime by just connecting them to the master toggle here. Go back to draw group zero, and here's our character. Now, why did I leave that hair? Because I just wanted to show you another way to do this is I can use any image to texture this. So for instance, I could use a jit.noise just to give some funky hair color. Jit.noise 3 float 32. So now I've got a interactive random hair colorizer. And so that's it. That's the fundamentals of creating an animated character and getting him into Max.